thanks for coming into the channel, Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. That's my religious channel. That's my, sorry, sociological channel um, for the tradies and that. We are studying Romans 7, and we're up to the part where Paul talks about he was he see sin seized him by taking opportunity through the commandment. In other way, the doorway for sin to gain influence over him, me, you, all the rest of it is through the commandment. Religious evil, religious born sin comes through trying to keep the commandment. Now that comes down to whether you want to believe that Paul or not whether you want to believe the authority and authenticity of the New Testament, I do. I believe a lot of the sin that takes place in churches and these other places is a result of people trying to make God happy or stop him from being sad, which is the most abbreviated version or definition of the commandments that I could think of. Paul realized that sin took opportunity through the commandment, through the things that he thought he needed to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. And his revelation is, apart from the Mosaic law, when you're apart from that law, when you've separated yourself away from that law, sin is dead. That's the key to escaping religious sin. Stay away from the law. That'll give you a head start because you're supernaturally giving power to giving the doorway to giving opportunity to you're allowing sin to seize opportunity over you when you try to do things to make god happy or stop him from being sad outside of the finished work or alongside of the finished work of the lord jesus christ paul goes on to say and i just want to change this around a bit I'm going to move that down there, that over there, that up there. Then I put my noggin there. And then this over here. And that there. Paul goes on to say, once I was alive apart from the law. In other words, there was no sinful intrusion instigated by religious um, fanaticism or devotion by trying to make God happy and st or stopping him from being sad by what Paul was trying to do. Oh, dear, I just, okay. Apart from the law, sin was dead. Apart from the law, his mind was alive. He had all his natural senses that he needed. He was in touch with his natural senses. But when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and he died. How did he die? He lost touch with his conscience. Sin was able to cordial into his mind in a way in which it was causing him to make decisions that brought death. Bad decisions, decisions that brought death. Because he says again, for sin, seizing its opportunity through the commandment, deceived him. So, and put him to death. Now, there's such a thing in psychology... Um, that describes a bad mother, a mother that's negligent toward her children or doesn't help them to grow their character properly and this kind of thing, called a dead mother. It's described as a dead 
mother. She hasn't done a good job. Well, sin puts the good part of us um, in a position where it can be deceived. And it uses the commandment to infiltrate this power. So you can be cruising along, oh, I'm making God happy. I'm stopping him from being sad. All this. Right? You think you're on the right track and then all of a sudden you're deceived. You've deceived. Sin's allowed to deceive you. Come in. Worked its way up to a point where it's deceiving you and the next thing you're doing things that are wrong. That's how God's designed designed it, unfortunately. That's why the Gentiles were never subject to the law, the Mosaic law, and should never have been involved in it. But we can't help ourselves. We have to interfere in all things not even pertaining to us. So the law is holy and commandment is holy, righteous and good, but it's of no use for the, an approach to God. Did that which is good then become death to me? Certainly not. But in order that sin might be exposed as sin, so that I might be able to recognize, so that I can tell there's a sinful nature inside me that I need salvation from, it produced death in me, Paul says, through that which was good. And this is the whole part of the New Testament that most Christians completely and utterly have no idea of. Good produces death when you get your Christianity wrong. If you're approaching God by the things that you think you need to do or not do to make him happy or stop him from being sad, guess what? You're produ producing death because there's no other way to approach God except through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we do try and approach God through the things we think we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad alongside of or contrary to our faith in Christ or believing in Christ as our intermediator between us and God, we become utterly sinful. I'm sorry, that's what the writer of the New Testament says. That's why they can't work out why good people go bad, why good religious people go bad. They can't work it out. Why do good people, religious people go bad? Why don't some people just get it right in Christianity? Because they think there's things they need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. And guess what? Through that mindset, sin becomes utterly sinful. Hmm. Verse 14. We know that the law is spiritual. The law is not the problem. But I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. And this is what, what he's saying. The commandment put him to death. Now he's not understanding what he, what he wants, what he's doing. He's lost his rationale. He, he's making decisions that are not normally the decisions that he would make. For what I want to do, I do not do. Everything becomes contrary. But what I hate, that I do. That's how sin becomes utterly sinful. And if I do what I do not want to do, I admit that the law is good. And in that case, it is no longer I who do it, but sin. It is sin living in me that does it. And that's a confession that he recognized that there is sin in him. There's an evil sinful nature that will work against him and be empowered against him by the things he thought he needed to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. So how many religious sinful people are there running around, viewers? 
I'll let you work that out. This is Dr. J.W. Morrison. Bye for now.